Hi, this is Dr. Ryan Kazumi. Today I would like to discuss a simple technique for conversion of thin tissue biotype to a thicker one in the uh, edentulous areas for improved success of large bone augmentation procedures. One of the main challenges in the reconstruction of large ridge defects, whether it's using an onlay graft, uh, tie mesh, or other bone augmentation techniques, is having the adequate quantity and quality of soft tissue for uh, closure over the grafted bone. This is particularly important in vertical bone augmentation where the soft tissue requires significantly more uh, repositioning. Patients who present with a thin tissue biotype are at increased risk for graft failure, mainly due to soft tissue dehiscence and breakdown over the grafted site. Therefore, in such circumstances, it's highly beneficial to convert the thin tissue biotype to a thicker one before the bone grafting procedure is performed. The thickness of the soft tissue over the defect can be easily measured either with a periodontal probe or simply by palpating it. My protocol is to augment the soft tissue first, converting it from a thin biotype to a thicker one, allowing it to heal for about two and a half to three months, and then perform the bone augmentation surgery secondarily. This allows adequate time for the soft tissue to integrate, to heal, to mature, and develop the vascularization necessary for success of our bone graft. A soft tissue with thick biotype is much easier to work with and manipulate when raising a flap, repositioning it, or during suturing. It also offers more resiliency during the flap advancement and it also adds additional protection over the grafted bone, hence decreasing chances of dehiscence. So let's take a look at this patient who had multiple previous surgeries for failing implants, presenting with a large vertical deficiency in the posterior mandible, with good interceptal bone level at the premolar, and good bone height approaching the ramus aspect. It's not unusual to see soft tissue atrophy in multiply operated sites and loss of vestibular depth that limits the amount and quality of the available soft tissue. A tie mesh technique was elected to restore the horizontal and vertical deficiency in this patient. However, the soft tissue is quite thin and inadequate and would present a high risk of dehiscence, which would be detrimental to the success of the, of the tie mesh and the bone graft. So we'll first convert the soft tissue to a thick tissue biotype and then perform the bone augmentation in a delayed fashion. Let's walk through the procedure step by step. First, we'll localize the area. Since we're going to develop a supraperiosteal flap, we'll place the local anesthesia solution at the submucosal level and attempt to balloon the soft tissue, which will help with the dissection as well as with hemostasis. Next, we'll create two vertical incisions, one at the anterior aspect and one at the posterior aspect of the defect. The incision is just submucosal and not full thickness. Then using a curved Metzenbaum or a long uh, tenotomy scissor, we'll create a tunnel submucosally using a dull and sharp dissection in a supraperiosteal fashion and continue it through the posterior vertical incision. We'll also extend the dissection inferiorly toward the vestibule. Since we'll eventually place a mid-crestal incision for the bone grafting, it is important that we extend the dissection as superiorly as possible toward the crestal aspect. For tissue graft, we'll use an alloderm graft, but one can also use an autogenous connective tissue graft, uh, particularly for uh, smaller defects. First, we'll reconstitute the alloderm graft with platelet-derived growth factor obtained from the patient and allow it to sit for about 15 minutes. Next, we'll fold the alloderm with its dermal side inverted on the surface and place a couple of stabilizing sutures. 
This provides us with a thicker graft than if used as a single layer. Next, we'll place four sutures, one on each corner to help manipulate the graft during its tunneling and its repositioning. A long hemostat is placed through the tunnel, either from the anterior or the posterior incision, uh, whichever is easier. We'll then grasp the sutures on the corners of one end and start to pull it through. The two sutures on the other end are held by the assistants so that the graft maintains its form and does not fold while it's being pulled through the tunnel. As the hemostat is withdrawn from one end, the graft on the other end is tucked in while controlling it with the guiding sutures. And this is continued until the graft is fully positioned in the tunnel. Next, we'll add some additional platelet-derived growth factor in the site. The vertical incisions are then closed on each end with uh, single interrupted uh, dissolvable sutures. And we'll let the graft heal for about three months before uh, proceeding with bone augmentation. So with this approach, we can effectively convert a thin tissue biotype to a thicker one with benefits of easier and safer flap design and manipulation and decreased risk of tissue dehiscence over the grafted site, which will ultimately improve uh, the uh, outcome of bone grafting procedure. <laughs>